This is one of several videos that will probably eventually be made about file input and output in C. And um, what I'm going to do in, in this video is explain this function, read lines. And my model here is this really nice function that exists in, uh, in Python, which is the read lines function, which you're probably familiar with if you've ever done any Python programming. It's so easy to do file IO in Python. So let me, it's so easy, let's just do it now in like 30 seconds. So I have this file called lorem ipsum text, which is the uh, classic name for text that's just sample text boilerplate that doesn't mean anything. And I'm going to open that. So let's say f is equal to open. And the name of that file is, uh, <coughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry, uh, lorem uh, ipsum dot txt. And after I open that, I'm going to read the lines, which is the, the magic function that I'm trying to, to duplicate here. And now if you look at what f is now, f is an array of strings, and each string is one line that appeared in the file. So this first element in the array is just the first line from the file. Uh, lorem, ipsum, dolor, sit, emet, etc. So I want to write a function that does sort of the next best thing to that in C. And C, the code is never going to be that simple, because in Python, you don't have to worry about types and um, you know, you can also, there's this sort of stream uh, way of interacting with a Python interpreter, whereas in C you have to write a whole file and compile it and stuff. Um, but let's just go through here and hit on some of the important, uh, important functions. So the first thing I do is uh, check that the user is using my program correctly. So this is like a, a lazy version of, of the usage clause. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let the, the user type in the name of the file that uh, she wants to open as a command line input. So by checking this, I make sure that the user has entered at least one command line input. That's kind of a lazy way to check that. And now I have a, a file name buffer. I'm pretty sure on Linux, file names can be at most 35 characters. I didn't check that, but you might want to look that up. Um, so if, if this is all Greek to you, then you might want to look at the video on command line input. I'm assuming that you know how this works. So argv is a, a list of strings, and they, it begins with the name of this program. And then the first element in, in this array of strings will be uh, the first command line input, which will be the file name. We'll copy it in here. This n and strn copy means copy at most uh, 39 bytes sort of a safer version of the string copy function. Now I, I print to the screen that I'm opening a certain file. You can see that that comes out right here. And instead of using regular printf, I've used fprintf. f stands for file. And what you can do there is you can put uh, a file stream. And I've put standard error there. Um, so if you don't know what standard error is, it's like standard out except not um, so you can see here I'm redirecting the output of the program in, into this other text file. Uh, the, the standard out is being redirected into this text file, but the good thing about standard error is that it's distinct from standard in, and so it comes out separately, and I can gather information, and it doesn't mess up this, this test that I, d I then do to make sure that my output is the same as, as the input. So it's just sort of a, an auxiliary uh, output stream that's built in. And you can redirect that also by putting a number here, like 2 in front of the, the file redirection symbol. You can read about all those things. Maybe I should make a video about that. If you Google standard error, standard in, standard out, redirection, it'll all come up. And uh, OK, so I need to keep track in C, unlike in Python, of the number of lines that I managed to read. In Python, it's all implicit. You know, I don't have to remember how long this thing is. The system knows how many lines it is, and it's Im impossible for me to do buffer overflow or segmentation fault or anything like that. Uh, but in C, the training wheels are off. Um, and here we're in a situation, I want to read the, the lines and sort of return those. So that's going to be an array of arrays. 
And if you find this confusing, then you might want to watch the video on uh, dynamically allocated two-dimensional arrays. So I'm assuming that you understand how this works. Uh, so that's what's going to be returned is an array of arrays. Uh, you know, the, the rows are going to be strings, and that's it, right? So a char star is a string, and then I have an array of those. And so that together is all the lines in the file. So that's how that works. I need to pass that back, but like I said, I also need to keep track of how many lines the, the file is. So I pass that in as a pointer, and then this function is going to alter this value as a side effect and make it record the number of lines that were actually read. And here is the file name. This read lines is a, fu is a function that I've written, and we're going to go look right now and see how that works. So let's go up here and take a look at that. All right. So you can see from the prototype that it works just like I was saying. And uh, you know, char star is what a string is. Now this is uh, the, the magic. This is um, defining a file stream and getting it from the system using fopen. So this is this is C's high level quote unquote file I/O. There's another video in this tutorial series uh, that says its title is something like application encryption and in that example we do low-level I.O. with file descriptors this is uh, quote-unquote high-level I.O. it's a little bit more comprehensible because you don't have weird flags and all caps and sort of more intuitive it's this basically the same as the Python syntax here you know a lot of the Python syntax is modeled on the C syntax so I open this file, this is the name, this is the um, the mode. And what, you, what you're saying by writing R here is that you just want to read this file. So there's several other options which I'll talk about in maybe other videos, like you might want to write, you might want to uh, write in such a way that you append at the end of the file and don't overwrite anything, etc, etc. But um, this is just the read option. So when you read a file, it doesn't make any sense to read a file unless it already exists. And if the file doesn't exist, then this will return failure. The way it indicates failure is it returns a pointer to null. So you have to check that, and I check that kind of lazily here with these assert statements. And you need assert.h to make those work. What assert does is it takes a boolean condition as input. This is either true or false. If it's false, then it kills the program, and you get some semi-informative error message about which line caused the program to explode. So I really like this assert function. OK, um, so now we're doing the two-dimensional dynamically allocated array stuff. And I have to do it this way, because I don't know how long each line is. Maybe each line is a million characters long. Uh, I can't just define some two-dimensional array of uh, fixed length because I don't know what that length is going to be. I also don't know how many lines the file might have. The file might have a billion lines for all I know, so I can't write that into my code. I have to dynamically allocate it and let that memory be allocated if possible as the program runs and it becomes clear what those dimensions really are. Um, so the way the two-dimensional dynamically allocated array is uh, works, so first you allocate memory for um, a certain number of rows, and by default here I picked one. So one is going to be inadequate for almost every single file, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to make sure this code works. So I want to run into that condition where this number is not big enough right away, because I don't want to you know, I could have made this a thousand and maybe it works in a couple examples, but then once this number uh, proves to be inadequate and we have to do some kind of reallocation, then my program would break and I wouldn't detect that in the testing phase. So one is unrealistically small. I knew that when I did it, I wanted it to explode if it was going to right now. Uh, so this is type char star because each uh, row is a char star because it's a string, right? And now we go through this uh, while loop. And what the while loop does is it, it reads each line in turn. And this i is a counter, and it keeps track of which line we're reading. So this little block right here, this if statement, checks to make sure that we still have enough memory. 
So we know we only allocated enough memory for one row, so this is going to be relevant pretty quickly. So if this condition i equals numlines mem is true, that means that we don't have enough memory, uh, we don't have enough rows to read the next row. So what we have to do is allocate some more memory. And I'm doing that using this function called realloc, which I haven't talked about in any other video. You might want to just Google it and read the manual page on it. It's like malloc, except it remembers what was there before, and so it automatically makes a copy of all the information that I had. Uh, if It's possible that realloc can just sort of extend the amount of heap memory that was allocated to this pointer before, uh, but it might have to move things around. So it might be kind of a slow function, but it's very nice because I don't have to take care of the copying myself. Realloc does it all and I pass it uh, what I want to be the new size, and I double the size, and you want to do that too. Um, it just makes makes it so that you don't have to call this too often if you double it every time you run out. If you just increase it arithmetically, you know, by increasing, by allocating like 10 more slots or something, then generally you're going to have to do the memory allocation a lot more frequently if you do it arithmetically than if you let it grow geometrically like this. This is uh, the pointer that I had. Now it returns a, a new pointer. And you want to do it that way because you don't want to clobber what you had. So suppose that lines is fine, realloc fails. You don't want to put the resulting pointer right back into lines here because if that's true, then realloc could return null to indicate failure and then that would clobber the memory that you had that was all nice. and it stops you from being able to gracefully recover. I haven't written code in here that lets me gracefully recover if it does explode, but this is still the right form. And um, here I do some quick error checking to make sure that something actually was allocated. Now, now it's safe to make lines equal more lines. And uh, this indicates that the number of memory, that, that the amount of memory that we have allocated now is uh, doubled. And do I have a memory leak here? I might possibly have a memory leak. I need to check on that. Hold on one sec. Okay, this is fine. There's no memory leak. It turns out that realloc, uh, when it does all this, it frees this memory if it succeeds. And so it's all good. Um, and now, you know, this is just the weird condition that's going to happen every once in a while, very infrequently. Typically, what we're going to do is come here, and I'm now each line is going to be a certain length. We don't know how long that's going to be beforehand, so I pick this kind of silly value of 1. Of course, every line is going to be much longer than 1, probably. Um, but uh, if it's going to break, I want it to break right now. So it's definitely going to have to probably reallocate with this default length. Um, so this is the current row, so the current line in the file, and I allocate memory for that, remembering to multiply here by size of char, even though that's just one, almost almost certainly, unless you're on some really weird system. And um, so this is allocating enough characters for a row. Now you check to make sure that you actually were able to allocate one character. And you're always going to be able to do that, but you have to check because it, it could fail. It's just good hygiene. And so this function getLine is not something that's in the C standard library. It's a, a quote-unquote POSIX function. So it'll always be on your Linux system, but it might not be on your Windows system. Writing this function yourself is a great exercise. You should read the manual description of what getLine does. It takes a pointer to the array that you want to be filled with the current line, uh, which is kind of a mouthful, right? So it takes a, its type is char star star, or um, yeah, char star star. Notice that's what I'm passing it here. This is a pointer because lines is a double pointer. So lines with one subscript notation is a pointer. I get its address that makes it a double pointer. And um, it takes uh, this, value len, which it uses to record um, the length of the line that gets read, or the amount of memory that's allocated to this. So we know it's allocated only length 1 right now. That's not going to be enough, 
the git line automatically does reallocation for you to make it long enough and it, this keeps track of how much memory is now allocated to your array and this is the name of the file so this is my file descriptor up here remember our file stream so uh, this line executes git line and this returns into file if it reads nothing and in that condition in that condition we want to stop because we've read the entire file otherwise we increment i because we want to start talking about the next line this is that variable that i passed in to remember how many lines were read and it turns out that i've read i lines you have to remember to close the file you know the sky won't fall if you forget to do this but you should you should do it because uh, the system can only keep track of so many open files at once. I think the limit is like 200 or something. I don't know. But it's good practice to always make sure you close the file. Now I return lines. Now back in main, we have this uh, array of arrays, which is uh, the, the lines of the file. And now I just call this silly print function. It needs to know how many lines to print. And there's the whole thing right there. And uh, so that's the output that gets stored in, in this text file. And by using diff here, I, I just do a quick check. It would be really neat if the output were exactly the same as the input. And you can see that that's what happens because diff returns no output. And that's it.